Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the part 4 of our little grasshopper series. So to start off, that's what we're going to do today. Um, we had our script beforehand already that defines the gradient and has the amount of um, rectangles extruded in a certain way and then those um, rectangles are also defined by an amount of random points that we created. What we want to do now and I will introduce you as well to a certain new components, the one of them being range, then also rebuild and offset. And um, we are going to, I'm going to show you how that will be done. So let's delete those things here first. So you have to understand the, the thought process behind this. We're having basically the ground curves here and we want to move them up here and then we want to basically have the in-between curves there as well. And this is depending on each of those, uh, it will be different, basically the height. So what do we already have? We already have the height that we defined here. So from a minimum of, of two, and it goes up incrementally to one uh, until the end number, basically. So what we're going to do is we're gonna use the move commands and we also need a direction z and this normally just puts in and then we also need the the, the in geometry in the first end and normally you see it just creates this geometry a little bit further above in the height of one but we want it to be moved several times up so there's a command called range here. and it basically takes two parameters ones of being the domain so basically being um, how far those things will go up it always starts with zero and it goes to one and then the amount of steps in between those things so basically we need this height and then it will be the amount of steps in between will be the division point so the, the domain we can construct it normally but we can also just drag and drop them in here and it creates a domain between zero and the point that, that we basically defined here. And the amount of steps we will just create ourselves. Um, just do 11 for now. And then we're gonna put this into the Z direction, to the direction up. Um, as you see, and this might get a little complicated now, uh, those are all over the place. And the reason why is because when we create this domain, it always creates those um, 11 steps or like 12 results in total, but it doesn't know where to put those in. So it creates basically a tree. And when we do the panel here, you see this is basically a tree here. So this is one branch, that is one branch, there's another branch, another branch, another branch. If you see it from the series here originally, it's all just in one entire thing. But here is basically, it's grouped, it's like subdivided. So we want each of those points to um, correspond to each of the branches here. So what we're doing here, we just need to right click it and click graft. And now you see it basically creates the correct way of how we want it to have. So every one of those um, series commands gets uh, defined to the motion or gets um, grouped to the, to the motion that we have for each of the um, rectangles or the forms. So that's already a very, we're going, going to, to grafting and flattening later in this tutorial or well, another tutorial, but that's basically of what you are going to see for, like, for the moment. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create um, an offset and go for offset loose. And it basically takes input curve for distance and a plane, the plane we don't need to worry about. And we just take the curve here. And as you see, it creates a basic offset. So I think this is kind of like a little bit boring. So we're going basically the distance of the offset will be again dependent on the interactor point of the distance we had here before. However, we need to take in mind that the distance right now is just one and here the distances are really, really big. So we're going to um, 
use those numbers and we're going to um, multiply them so it doesn't get doesn't get that heavy we're going to multiply them by a magnitude of less than one more or less like here and we're going to put them in the distance here as you see right now it's a lot of curves and furthermore i actually think yeah we also need to graph them as well so each curve gets defined just like one of those things so now, so let's reduce them a little bit and as you see that looks a little bit more something that we can actually use and yeah the good thing again is here because it's tied to our tractor point if you move it around it actually moves around with it as you see it gets bigger and bigger and the the colors also kind of depend on it as well anyway um right now the curves are really kind of rectangular which could be fine but i want to make a little more like an uncontrolled mix in there as well and i want to rebuild them here with rebuild um curve yeah it's under curve uh, by the way if you want to see how this is done like you see you can just click on any component and it basically tells it location you have to contr uh, um, control alt and just click and it basically tells the location of the things so it's a curve this uh, and if i click on this control alt here um you'll see where this thing came from anyway and we're just gonna drag and drop the curve in here and uh, it needs to have a degree count uh, and tangents those are don't really matter but like the degree does matter because we want to have them in a more like fluid way so there are four different degrees it can take or it, it, it well there are more even more than that but like it basically makes the curve look more smooth so that's what we're going for here okay now we have basically um the curve at the beginning and also the the offset curve which has some kind of fluid uh, dynamic almost to it and we want to use the boundary surface commands um, to basically connect the curve to kind of make this um, uh, shape more how do you say to make this shape more usable um, or make kind of like a surface on it as well so we can either just take the thing the whole thing of the curve here and then we have all the curves together which would work fine but I, maybe i just want to have the outer curve because right now it's like a complete thing so we're gonna use the merge command here and we're gonna use the data of this and that and it basically combines the um we're gonna actually just gonna use this data um we're gonna combine the curves of the inner on the outer way and now it creates basically those two curves which can then be connected together and as you see it creates basically like a outer layer to it as well this for some other one does it might be there might be some miscorrections here anyway to get this rid of those like ceilings like z fighting here we actually have to move everything a little bit more on the top so we're gonna just import um you're gonna just add a very very small number to the range um of the things and yeah here maybe i should do it negative so it goes down so it goes just below the surface here and now that should actually remove it yeah exactly okay um now we want to also give this a preview as well and we're gonna pick a color other than pink a panel color picker there it is maybe let's go actually for a hue of green again maybe like a little something more like that and let's deactivate those things as well so nice so here we already have our like usable balconies what i might want to do as well here um there is a way of animating your clips as well for example 
here right now we have this like point here right and it changes depending on the distance to it so uh, or like the color changes and the things change depending on the distance and we can actually make an animation um, in grasshopper that will put us out like a number of jpegs so we're going to do that here so let's start first of all so we have the point here and we want to move it from here to there um, like this so move and we're gonna use the x uh, unit x command because it's the x direction as you see the green, uh, red one is always x and then we're gonna take a number i'm just gonna see where it lands for now so this might be a little bit too far away i guess Okay, I don't see where the point is at the moment. Is it this one? So that's the point. Wait, let me... You might need to switch the viewport in order for it to work correctly. Anyway, um, I think I might have mistaken the initial point a little bit so we have it moving over here but it doesn't show up at the moment and I'm not sure why this is like normally a very typical way of problem solving grasshoppers so we can just take a look at that so ah oh yeah here it is so basically we have the point here right now and it goes up to yeah maybe 100 okay I think it could be fine next one we're gonna decrease the amount here and then we just put this uh, at zero and we're gonna use it as normal point which it already was before now we're gonna switch back to the rendered view and we're gonna create we're gonna right click this one click on animate and then it would basically make us this new window and we're gonna just create we can have to create a certain uh, solution resolution and we're just gonna go for a low one and 600 times maybe a little more white screen here actually center this animate and now we go for like i will go make it a rather small resolution just because i want to be that it would be quick and Actually, I want, I want to have it a little more centered as well. Select that. Right click it, animate. Have it at 600, 600. And then we have want to um, define the amount of frames that we're going to use. So I wanted to keep this like um, the process rather like quick. So I'm just going to put like 30 frames, which is around one second. And then I'm gonna also define a folder here. So on my desktop, I will just create a new folder. Um, folder and just OK. And then we click OK. And then, as you see, it will create in the um, Rhino environment, it will create uh, an amount of JPEGs that we can use then later in order for them to be used like in an anima in animation or in, in a GIF or in some kind of things. So if we just take a look at the folder, right now it is here and it just creates those frames like one by one uh, slowly over time and it's a very useful way of, of, uh, of um, creating like short animations if you want to show how your grasshopper design um, works out. And obviously it is actually rather quick. However, if your function gets bigger and bigger, it might be a problem that it's going to be defined correctly. Anyway, so if you just click through this, you see it changes over time. And I think that's pretty useful. So if you have, obviously you can um, 
if you want to animate more things at once that's gonna happen you have to basically always set a multiplier to a certain thing because if for example if you want to change the amount of steps or if you want to change the, the the basic rotation that we have here um we're gonna change the basic rotation a little bit we obviously have to make a multiple play here so it can be animated because you cannot animate several things at once so you need to basically have one slider which is animated to animate several other sliders as well so yeah anyway thanks for i hope you understood it just to recap so we took the um the height that we had used for the extrusion we made a range out of it that defines that makes 12 steps or a different amount of steps and on those steps we define an offset of the curve that we put up there and this offset then will have a boundary surface and this boundary surface has a defined color and this offset is also defined by the attractor point that we set earlier in the tutorial before that furthermore we defined um, we, we moved this um, attractor point over and with the, with the animation button, if you click on the number sliders, we define an animation that can be used um, to generate short movies. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and I hope you see you next one.